Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Lugnus Monster, and this is part number two of our Star Wars Z Black series Worst to First 2022 figures, where pretty much we are ranking every single Black Series figure in 2022 from worst to first. This is part two. If you guys did miss part one, make sure you go check that out. It is already up on the channel, but I will link it in the description and pin it in the card right now. So make sure you go check out part one and then come back here to part two. But yeah, we did the first 54 figures in episode 1, and now in part 2 we'll do the next 54 figures, which would be from, I want to say from 54 all the way up to 1. Real quick though, before we do get into the video, if you are new to the channel, make sure to go down, hit the like button, and subscribe, because we are giving away this clone, Captain Rex, at 8,500 subs, and we are like 60 subs away, which is incredible. We are so close to that milestone. So thank you guys so much for all the recent support. I do really, really appreciate it. And yeah, you do have to be subbed to the channel to enter those. So make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and on to the video. Coming in at the number 53 spot, I gave it to Prototype Boba Fett, and this one is a great figure, I do love Boba Fett, and the Prototype Boba Fett is a good figure, but this is just a re-release of an already existing figure, so because of that, it's a little bit lower on the list. Great figure, but just a re-release. Number 52 goes to the Ralph McQuarrie 2-pack. This one is a great set, and that Darth Vader looks incredible. Looks a lot like the concept art, but the problem is that they packed Obi-Wan in the set. And this Obi-Wan does look pretty good, but in all reality, they should have put in the Ralph McQuarrie Luke Skywalker instead of Obi-Wan. It just makes more sense, and that concept art is way more iconic. So yeah, cool set. I love the Vader, but it really should have come with Luke. Coming in at number 51, I gave it to Panda Baba. This is a cool figure, and it's really nice to get more of those Cantina aliens in the line. So, yeah, really happy with this one. It is a reuse of that Luke, uh, like, ceremony body. So, I mean, I would have liked to see an updated pinless look, but other than that, it's a great figure. And then along the same line, number 50 is Dr. I want to say Evazine, and I know I pronounce his name wrong every time, so I do apologize. This is around the same lines where a uh, good Cantina alien, we need more of those in the line, but has some reuse that would have benefited from some new molds. Number 49 goes to Archive Tarkin. Now this is another one of those Archive figures where um, it doesn't really need a photo reel update and uh, that, that's that's okay because this one was decently expensive on the aftermarket so it, it needed a re-release which is pretty cool so I'm actually really happy that this one got a re-release and it fills a pretty good Archive spot. Number 48 goes to the Gaming Grades Imperial Security Droid. This one is a super cool figure, but it is basically just a repaint of K2SO. But I do love a lot of the extra pieces that they gave him, like the backpack and the baton, as well as the nice red shoulder pad. Looks super cool, and one of my favorite figures of the year, but it did go a little bit lower on the list. For the next three spots, we do have the three members of Delta Squad that we got this year. Uh, last, I'm going to give it to Sev, just because I think he's the worst overall. He had a few different extra armor pieces that they didn't give him that I think he really needed. Next up would be Boss. Boss looks pretty cool, but he's nothing super special. And then Fixer is incredible. I really love the extra backpack they gave him, as well as the new helmet. Pretty cool overall, and I do really like how he came out. And uh, honestly, I'm just really happy we got Delta Squad. I know a lot of th these are some pretty controversial figures this year, and... Uh, that, that's fair. I, I think that they should have had the bulky armor, but I'm just really happy we're getting them all together. Number 44 goes to Bib Fortuna. This one is a great figure, kind of a traffic cone, unfortunately, but it's just really nice to get more of those uh, Cantina and Jabba's Palace aliens. And then next up, we do have Season 1 Migs Mayfeld. This one is a great figure, definitely the best version of Migs Mayfeld we have. I just really hope we get more of him in the show. Uh, I love Bill Burr's character, and like I said, I just like to see more of him in the show, especially this outfit, because his outfit is pretty cool. Number 42 goes to Archive Darth Revan. This one is one of those figures where he's super expensive on the aftermarket, so great, great re-release, and uh, definitely deserves an Archive spot. 41 is the exact same thing, it's Archive Dengar, and again, super, super expensive on the aftermarket, so it's really nice to get another version of this in the line, so re-release is perfect, takes up a great Archive swap. And then of course, 40 is the exact same deal, Archive 501st Trooper, this one is uh, my personal favorite Archive of the year, uh, this one's incredible, absolutely love the 501st Trooper, so it was really nice to get a re-release of this guy, especially because he was going for about $100 to $150 on the aftermarket, so great choice for an Archive figure. Number 39 is a little controversial, but I gave it to Saul Guerrera, and I know a lot of people, this figure was in their top 10, but for me, it just wasn't. It's a cool figure, and I do like how it came out. Definitely a lot of new bits here that uh, really just make this figure great, 
but uh, the character just doesn't do much for me. We we see him in a ton of different crap from Clone Wars to Rebels to movies to Andor, and he doesn't do anything. He kind of just stands there and talks, and I, I don't know. I, I'm just not a huge fan of the character. He's pretty cool, but uh, definitely not in my top 10. Number 38 goes to the convention Boba Fett, the San Diego Comic-Con one this year. This is the uh, pretty much all-black Boba Fett. This one looks awesome. I love the axe that he comes with. I've never read the comic, but I just think this one looks awesome. I'm a huge Boba Fett fan. So it's nice to see a super cool-looking Boba Fett like this one. And plus, the comic packaging with like the, the foil uh, box and everything is pretty cool. Number 37 goes to Droids Boba. Now this one is along the same line where I love the uh, the like comic inspired packaging, comic in quotes, and uh, the, the different colors of Boba. It's pretty cool. I didn't care too much for this one when it first got announced, but actually getting it at hand, I love this figure. I love the cool colors. And uh, yeah, I think the biggest complaint about the last two is just that they're not on that Return of the Jedi body. Coming at number 36, it does go to the Book of Boba Fett Boba. Now this one, I absolutely love. I loved him in The Mandalorian here, but I know this this goes kind of back to my part one of the video, but I just didn't really like what they did with the character in the Book of Boba Fett. So a lot of his Book of Boba Fett appearances, I just don't really like that much. Uh, cool looking figure, and I do love his outfit here, but the character I'm just not a big fan of. Coming in at the number 35 is the convention exclusive Andor set. Now this one's not bad, I do like the show Andor, but this just isn't my favorite outfit for Andor. Uh, I think he wore a lot better ones in the show. And then uh, I'm also not a huge fan of the droid either in the show. I know that's kind of controversial, but yeah, overall cool looking set, just not my favorite. Coming in at number 34 is the Imperial Dark Times Officer. This one is really cool, I do love the big flowing cape. Biggest problem is just it's on that original, uh, like, I guess officer body so it doesn't have the best updated articulation of some of the newer figures but uh, yeah do love the design just wish I had better articulation coming in at number 33 is Andor in his officer disguise now I really like this one not as an Andor figure but just as an Imperial officer I love the design of like the armor over the gray Imperial uh, like jumpsuit look and I, overall I, I really like it the number 32 goes to the Imperial Officer Ferrix, also part of the Andor line. This one is awesome. Again, I love that uh, armor over the normal like officer outfit, and plus the black on black looks super clean, and overall I do really, really like it. Number 31 goes to Archive Bush Leia. This one is like one of the top tier best archive releases we've ever gotten. Uh, the photo reel update is totally necessary. The original one was horrible. And then uh, this was just a super expensive figure, over a hundred bucks on the aftermarket. And with this new one, they actually did an update to where they made the figure uh, shorter because the original one was too tall for black series scale and they made the new one shorter. And that's awesome. Biggest problem is it still suffers from that original 2014 articulation. Number 30 does go to the Mando, Ahsoka, and Grogu 3-pack. This one is great. I do love the addition of the spear for Mando. It's a huge improvement. Also do love they did like kind of upgrade, update the helmet a little bit to make it look a little bit better. And then the Ahsoka with the cloak is great. The cloak is an awesome accessory. Really happy we finally got that. And then the Grogu is actually in a sitting position, one, which is awesome. But two, uh, they molded it to where his arms can actually hold stuff now, where he can actually hold the bowl with two hands, which is awesome. That's something that we needed for from the beginning of uh, Baby Yoda, and we just now got in this set. So if you're looking for a Baby Yoda, this is probably one of the best places to get one. But yeah, overall, just love the set. Number 29 goes to Sergeant Creel. This one is awesome. I love the comic book packaging. And basically, this is just a Stormtrooper with a lightsaber that is super awesome. You know, it's also on that new Stormtrooper body, which makes it even better. So overall, it is a great figure, and uh, can't wait to see more of Scar Squadron in the Black series. Next up at the number 28 spot, we do have the George Lucas Stormtrooper. This one is really cool, and I know I kind of hate it on, like, the Jon Favreau one, but this one's really cool because you throw the helmet on, and it's basically just a Stormtrooper re-release, which we needed. We need as many Stormtroopers out on the market as possible, so this one is a great release. Next up, we actually do have the uh, Gaming Great Scout Trooper with Riot Shield. This one is awesome. It pretty much took everything that I absolutely loved about the original Gaming Great Scout Trooper and added a Riot Shield, which is pretty cool, and the Riot Shield is awesome. Coming in at the number 26 spot, I gave it to the 187th Battalion Clone Trooper. This one is super cool, and it's one of those where I never thought we'd get it in the Black Series. So I'm just really happy we got it, and I think we need a lot more of these kind of obscure Clone Troopers in the line. 
And then 25 is for the same reason. It's one of those, it's an awesome clone trooper from a video game that it barely got any screen time in the game to begin with. But uh, it's one of those that looks awesome, and uh, I just think we need more of these obscure clone troopers. So this is a great uh, clone trooper release for 2022. At the number 24 spot, we do have the 501st Jet Trooper part of the game in Great Slime. This one is another one of those just incredible Clone Trooper releases, and uh, I absolutely love how it came out. They did add the jetpack on the back, which is incredible, and overall, it's just a super cool army builder, and it's from Battlefront 2, which is one of those where we just need more Battlefront 2 Clone Troopers, so overall, great release. Coming in at the number 23 spot, we do have the Clone Wars Tardiskovsky Mace Windu. I absolutely love the Jedi with the Clone Trooper armor, and this one is no exception, especially with the robe underneath the armor. It looks incredible, and I hope we get more of uh, the style troopers, or I guess Jedi, in the line. And uh, yeah, this one just is awesome, so definitely deserves uh, a, a spot on this list. The number 22 spot does go to Muddy Mando. This is a figure that I know a lot of people complain about the constant Mandalorian re-releases, but this is one that I absolutely love. Uh, the paint detail is great to make it look like layered mud, which is incredible. And I know back when Season 1 came out, I made a video talking about all the figures I'd want from Season 1, and this was on the list, and I'm just really happy that they finally made it. So, yeah, pretty cool figure. Number 21 goes to the Umbra Operative Arc Trooper part of the game in Great Sign. Now this one is incredible, I love the black and yellow color scheme, it looks awesome, and plus it is just another reuse of that Arc Trooper mold, which is awesome. I really wish they would do more Arc Trooper repaints, because I think it's one of the best figures in the line. And uh, yeah, this one is just no exception, plus again, another one of those Battlefront 2 clones, which we really need more of in the line. Breaking into the top 20, I, go, I gave it to the Mortar Trooper or the Artillery Storm Trooper, uh, whatever you want to call it. This one is incredible. I do love the yellow color scheme. It's this weird mustard color, but it somehow works. And the thing that really gets me with this one is just the large amount of accessories. It comes with the blaster, the actual mortar itself, as well as four mortar rounds and uh, the backpack to hold them all. It's just super cool and uh, one of my favorite ones of the year. Next up, we actually do have the Jetta Patrol Stormtrooper. This one is awesome, and that's not just because it's like from Rogue One or anything. It's because essentially without the backpack that it's wearing, it's just an orange pauldron Stormtrooper, which I love. Uh, I'm just really happy we got this one on that new Stormtrooper body too. That new Stormtrooper body is amazing, and uh, this one is no exception, especially with that orange pauldron. Number uh, 18 and 17 go to Nathan Shiel and Figure and Dan. Both these figures are incredible. Brand new head sculpt as well as a brand new just sculpt together head to toe. And uh, yeah, interchangeable hands for Nathan Shiel. Tons of accessories for Figure and Dan. Overall, it's awesome and it's a great army builder, especially for the Cantina band. So like I said, those Cantina aliens we really needed and this is no exception. This came out great. Number 16 is the fifth brother from Kenobi. Kenobi really knocked it out of the park with all the Inquisitors, and this one is incredible as well. I do love the uh, the face print on this one. This one looks incredible. And yeah, like I said, all the Inquisitor figures are just really good. And then number 15 goes to the Wandering Jedi Obi-Wan from Kenobi. This one is awesome. It comes with a ton of accessories, including a robe, the droid from the show, a lightsaber, and a blaster. Ton of accessories. And I do think the photo real likeness to this one is very, very similar to Ewan McGregor. I know some people do disagree, but I think this one is personally incredible, and it's definitely the best, uh, at least Black Series figure we've gotten uh, face-wise for Obi-Wan. And then number 14, we do have Tibbins Station Obi-Wan, or Obi-Wan in his blue shirt. And this one is really, really good. I do love the combo of the backpack and the kind of like half neck robe scarf thing. I don't know, it looks really, really cool. And I do just like the change up with the blue shirt, because in every other figure, Obi-Wan is uh, has like the tan Jedi robes. So it's nice to get a little bit of a change up, and I think the blue shirt looks really good. Number 13 goes to Axe Wolves. This one is really slept on this year, I think. This one is awesome. Essentially, it's very similar to uh, the, I want to call it the like Death Watch Mandalorian that came out this year. But uh, this one's awesome. I do love the face the face underneath. The photo reel is pretty good. And I do just love the blue and black combo. It looks super clean and super intimidating. So overall, this one is a great figure. Coming in at number 12, I gave it to the Grand Inquisitor. This one is awesome. You know, aside from the uh, really huge egg head, uh, this guy's awesome. Articulation's great. Brand new sculpt head to toe. Love the soft goods cape. And overall, I'm just really glad to have the Grand Inquisitor in the line finally. But yeah, that egg-shaped head is uh, kind of a bummer.
And then at the number 11 spot, I gave it to Snowy Mando. Now this one's a little controversial for being so high, but I definitely think this this is the best Mandalorian figure uh, released all time. This one is incredible. I love the snowy paint. It looks great. Accessories are great. And overall, it is just an awesome figure. Definitely the best Mando figure we've gotten so far. That might change though in 2023. So we'll have to wait and see. But I do love the Snowy Mando figure. And now breaking into the top 10, we actually already did talk about the top 10 in another video in our top 10 best Star Wars The Black Series of 2022 video. So if you do want to see all of these in depth, go check out that video. But right now we are going to go ahead and speed run the top 10. But like I said, if you do want to see an in-depth explanation of all of them, go check out that video. But yeah, number 10, we do have the Death Watch Mandalorian. That one was awesome. We do have the Kenobi Purge Trooper, one of my personal favorites of the year, uh, it would be in like number one or two for me personally. Uh, but then number nine, or no, I'm sorry, number eight, we do have Ala Sakura. Number seven, we have Cod Vanth, one of the best face prints of the year. Number six, we do have uh, Third Sister Reva. Number five, we have Bad Batch Echo. Number four, we have Finnick Shand. Number three, we have Ahsoka from The Mandalorian. Number two, we have the Dark Trooper. It is a deluxe figure, but definitely one of the best brand new sculpts of the year. Then coming in at number one as the best Black Series figure of 2022, we do have Season 7 Darth Maul. This one is incredible. So yeah, if you do want to see an in-depth review of like why each one got which spot, go check out that other video. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the like button and subscribe. And uh, let me know down in the comments if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video.